and welcome to lesson number six. And in this lesson, we are going to be inserting some data into our database, and then we will be uh, using PHP to pull it in within Dreamweaver. So let's go ahead and hop to it. So make sure MAMP is running. Open start page. Go to PHP my admin. Find SS blog that we created in the last lesson, and then go to insert. Oh, I'm sorry, click on blog because that's the one we're going to start with and then click insert. Okay, at the top, ID, uh, since we set it to auto increment, it will actually fill it in for us. So go ahead and start with the author. I'm just going to use my name. Current timestamp, you can leave that blank. Title, this is my first title. And I know I'm not using uppercase and stuff, but these are just samples so we can see that's working. This is my first subtitle. Let's change the first so we can tell between the two. For this, I'm using lorem ipsum, which is just placeholder text. If you've never heard of it, there's a awesome web. Just type in lorem ipsum, and the lorem ipsum generator is the bomb for web developers. It's just lines and lines of all different kinds of fake text to help fill your website. Uh, for video, let's go ahead and look up a YouTube video. YouTube educational, so we don't get anything inappropriate. Um, well, that didn't work so good. Let's do, there's like a youtube.com slash edu or something I thought. There it is. And we'll just take this top one. Um, first thing, I designed this site to specifically handle videos that were 640 pixels. So when we embed this, embed, choose the 640 option, which is usually selected by default, but not always. And just copy that, come back to MAMP and paste it in. Uh, for the source, um, since we won't let it be null or have nothing in it, you have to put something. So just use a pound sign for now. That'll be fine. And now let's create our second field. Leave ID blank. We'll do Scott's friend. This is just a test for us. Um, title. This is my second post. This is my second subtitle. Lorem Ipsum. Um, we'll paste the same video in. And for our source, we'll use a pound sign again. When you're done, click go. And there it goes. Two rows were inserted successfully. Um, I had an, in, an unsuccessful video before this, so mine says ID4. And it's because I've gone back and deleted some. Um, click browse to see. So I've got ID3 and ID4. And you can tell this is my first and this is my second. So there, it is arranging them pro appropriately. But it should actually be one and two probably on yours. But since I've already deleted them, it won't go back and start over. Those are just gone. But that's okay. It doesn't make any difference to our website. So now we can hop into Dreamweaver and click on Databases. And the first thing we need to do is create a binding. Well, we have to get our file open first. And make sure we're in the right site. There we go, SS blog. And you'll notice that we have a new connections folder with our database connection PHP in it contains configurations to connect to our database. Go ahead and open index.php and here's your site. It should look something similar to this still. And now we'll need to go to bindings and add a query. So we've created a connection. Now we're creating a query to the blog table. And we want to use the dbcon requirement to connect. We want to connect to the blog table and let's just select these because we're going to have to format the date so that it shows up appropriately. So just hold the shift key or the command key or command works on Mac and highlight all of them that you want besides the date. Filter none sort by date descending. Hmm. Yeah, I bet if we do it like that, that'll work. Actually, go ahead and select the date. We'll just have to go in and delete it and format it. Click OK. And there we go. It selected it all for us. Um, if we did select all, it would have just done like select all, or we used the asterisk, select all from, and none of this stuff would have been here and would have had to handwrite it all, which wouldn't have been a big deal. But that's why I chose to do selected instead of, <coughs> um, instead of uh, just select all. 
Um, but here we need to format the date because it's going to come out in a crazy format here. It won't be very eye appealing. So we just have to do a my SQL function here. Date format date. I'm going to think about this in my head. I don't have it memorized exactly, so sometimes it takes me a second. And we want uh, the month, the day, and that's going to be the number of month, the day. I'm using periods because I think they look nice on the site to separate them. And then the year capitalized, so it gives us the full year. And then, But we'll give it an alias as formatted date. So that should be it. I think that'll do it. Um, now we just need to find some stuff to replace. Um, we're only working with the blog table at the moment, so we're only replacing things that the blog table can replace, but it can replace the blog title. And we do that by going, you, you probably are on the common tab, you'll want to find the data tab, come down to the ABC with a lightning bolt, that means dynamic, and choose dynamic text. And we are in the, make sure you're in the appropriate record set, which is blog, sometimes you'll have more than one, and then choose title. Click OK. And that's all there is to it. Now we have magically pulled in the title from those databases, um, from our database. I think it's quicker than doing that every time, is just copy this and then paste it in. Well, it is quicker usually if you can select it. Paste it in and then change this to subtitle. You can do that for most things here, posted by author and then date posted. And now this one's a little different. Um, even though we called it date in our table, we set an alias for it, so we need to call our alias formatted date. Um, our article. Our video code. and our source code. And now this is a little different because it is just a link inside of here. But that's okay. Um, it'll work just the same. Just name that source and save that. And now if it worked, we will see at least one of our blog posts because we haven't told it to repeat this section over and over again just yet, but we did pull it, tell it to at least pull it in once. So we should see the latest video in here since we told it to pull it in by descending. Let's see if we did it right. And it worked. Hmm, but we don't have our article. Did I misspell that? But our date has been formatted, posted by Scott's friend, which was the second post. Um, this is my second post, and this is my second subtitle. And it all looks pretty good. But we don't have our, we have our video. We don't have our, our uh, article. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's an easy fix. And there's our article. So now all we have to do is get this region to repeat more than once. And to do that is really easy. Um, we want the entire blog container region. And the reason I have this blog container div is because I wanted it to contain everything I'm going to need to repeat multiple times. So just select that whole region. Come over here. You can scroll over it. There's uh, some arrows on a page that says repeat region. Um, what record set do you want to repeat? And uh, how many times do you want it to repeat? We just want to show all records for now. Click OK. You'll see that it does all the PHP work for you. Save it. And even though you only see these, it actually put a bunch more code up here too. So, pretty nifty. And now we have our latest post, the latest and greatest, by, followed by our first post. So it's putting them in the proper order and everything's looking perfect. Um, obviously they look very similar, but you can see that this is my first title, this is my second post. So they are different and it is pulling them in the proper sequence. 
So um, now that we're done with that, uh, I'm going to wrap it up for this lesson. And in lesson number seven, we're going to be going over the login system. There's so much to do with the login system that there's just no way I can cover it. It's some of its really advanced topics, but I will be showing you a little bit. We might talk about the MD5 function, which is what we'll be using to encrypt our passwords. And um, there's just not a whole lot we can do. We might jump into some other things. I'm going to see how it's going to go. But uh, the login system will we'll pretty much just be hitting on extremely briefly. But hopefully I will still see you in Lesson 7. Maybe you can learn something interesting there. And uh, I will catch you guys then.